everyone, it's Angel here on the Hopper Division. I'm here with 5895 Petty Robotics. Winners of the Hatboro Horsham event, the Ben Salem event, and the FMA District Championship for the wonderful bot here talking about their under the bumper intake, uh, their algorithm and note pathing, and wonderful stuff here on Hopper. So let's get right to it on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So let's start off passing it over to Cafe, who's going to talk to us about their intake. Yeah, so this year we have an under the bumper intake. Uh, it's run based on compliant wheels, so the black ones are the 2-inch compliant wheels, and then we have the 1 and 5 eighths one at the bottom. So because we're so low to the ground, having a smaller diameter helped us pick up notes better, so that's like the first mantra, you touch it, you own it, that's kind of what we were shooting for. Uh, it runs just off one 775 Pro motor. Uh, these two belts over here are the driving belts, so they're each connected by pulleys. And then these two belts here are to guide the note up. Uh, and these pulleys actually have bearings inserted into them, so they rotate freely, like kind of independent of the axle. Uh, when we were prototyping, we found that sometimes if too many timing belts were running in parallel, the note would get stuck and the belts would like get caught and be like uh, out of like rhythm with each other and like the entire intake would freeze up. And yeah, it's really cool. We also have a, a beam brake sensor over here, so that's how we know when to stow our cartridge because our cartridge, sorry, comes up. It's, it's, yeah, can you uh, go to intake position? Yeah, and stow. So it comes up so the note can go into the cartridge. Uh, and how we automatically stow is through this beam brake sensor. Once it detects it and then loses it, it'll know that a note has been successfully intaken and stow automatically. So quick, quick question real quick on the design process. Why did y'all go with a behind the bumper intake this year instead of the traditional over the bumper intake we see in FRC? Yeah, so this year, because the notes were so low to the ground, we didn't want the chance of like a note getting caught under our robot versus that rule that you can only control one note at a time. And also, uh, it's really easy to kind of like just drive into a note or like smack the source wall in intake, but it's harder to kind of be more precise about it. And we didn't want to like wreck our over the bumper intake in the event that it happens. Well, very good intakes looking from here and very fascinating to see how that all works together. But let's go over to Sean, who's going yeah, to talk to us about the, intake the note pad and, and our flywheel. Yeah. So, as you can see, this is what our robot does after it, it has intake to note. Basically, it automatically goes back to a stowed position with the note inside what we call a cartridge. And then uh, on the cartridge side, there is two beam brake sensors, one in here and then one on the top of the flywheel. So. Once uh, both are triggered, we know that a note is inside the cartridge, that, and then we know that we have a note, then, and then we can pre prepare to go to a shooting position, whether it be to the speaker or to the amp. And for our shooting, our shooter design this year, we wanted to execute uh, precise shots in a variety of ranges, primarily like from up to the subwoofer to the podium spot. So we obviously designed a free rotating uh, shooter which, uh, with a similar mechanism with a, with a similar sh shoulder mechanism that we did last year in 2023. So basically this flywheel pivots into a desired position that correlates to the limelight, angle, limelight distances that our, program, that our programming folks will talk about later. And then it goes, and then it also pivots forward to go into the amp shot position. And can you demo demonstrate yeah. the amp can shot? Can you get a demonstration so, about yeah. the whole robot, uh, like the pathing of the node? and Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So this is the outtake, intake again, amp prep position, amp shot. So yeah, that's the overall pathing of the note from the intake and if we want to spit out a note from the outtake or if we want to score in the amp position. So yeah. So 
Very cool, but let's go over to Sean, or to Eric, who's gonna talk to us about our climber. All right, so our climber has two key characteristics. One of them is our worm gearbox, and the other part is our sweeping arm. Um, we use a sweeping arm this year because that way we don't need to be perfectly on top of the chain, and we can be a little bit further back or a little bit further forward and just crash into the chain and just sweep the arms down, and we'll always be on the chain. Additionally, the straight up arms sometimes have notes get caught on them, our sweeping arm design will make sure that the notes don't get stuck on a robot. But once again, for that rule, we can only have possession of one note. Uh, our gearboxes are custom worm gearboxes. We noticed this year that we wanted to uh, climb really fast, but that would require a low, um, a low reduction. So there would be a lot of back driving on our gearboxes. To remove that back driving, we made it a worm gearbox. And with the worm gearboxes, there is no back driving because of the way the gears are set up. Yeah. So you, you said you wanted to climb really fast. How fast do you all climb regularly? I average? think we can climb in just a few seconds. Like We can show you the can climb right the... now. And that is our climbing sequence. Yep. Very cool, very amazing robot. But mechanically, it's not just the mechanical part of the robot. There's also software in the control system. So let's also pass it down to Sean, who's going to talk to us about the control system of your robot. Yeah, of course. Um, basically, this year we wanted maximum controllability of our robot, so we went with a state, the state machine design. So whenever the driver or operator, they press a button on the controller, it cues or it requests a certain state. And based on like logic gates, it'll make sure that it'll go to that state without ever causing like interference between like handoffs. Like for example, the node can't go through right now because the, the robot's in a stow position. So the robot, it, the robot can't intake unless it's in that intake position. And you can show that right now if you go to intake. Yeah, so a robot always knows exactly what it's doing and it automatically passes between different states. And uh, additionally, uh, you can go to the... Uh, and additionally, we also have um, a line light here for looking at the APO tags underneath the speaker. And what that does is, in order to target to the speaker, we, we, we find the TX error between the speaker um, between, like the, the angle between them, and then we use a PID controller to minimize the error. And we also use TY from the limelight to calculate our distance from the, the speaker. And that way we will feed our values into a lookup table, which will interpolate between values that we tested inside of our lab to, to find angles to split the shooter in when it wants to shoot from a distance. Very cool. And let's move over to Philip, who's going to talk to us about some of your auto and your algorithm that you're using for this bot. Okay, so this year we're running with Krakens on our bot, and it's all Krakens except for the intake motor. And to control a lot of the things we're doing, like our arm and our flywheel, we're actually using um, a lot of the pre-built uh, Phoenix Tuner X tools, such as the torque current control. Um, and our philosophy for autos has always been is consistency is key. So we realized with a new carpet this year, and um, how the field is always built a little bit differently. We realize that it's really, really hard to keep consistent with just regular driving. That is why we have a limelight here in the back for note detection. It's a limelight three hooked up to a Coral coprocessor. And it basically, when you're in the intake state, enabling, when you're in the intake state, oh, there's a note. Yeah, sorry. When you're in the intake state, this camera will actually come up and the note will be in the field of view of this camera if it's in, in, in front of the robot. So like this. With this camera, we're basically able to see all the notes in front of us, and we're able. We have an algorithm that steers into it uh, autonomously, and we use that both in autonomous and also in teleop to aid the drivers, which makes their life a lot simpler. So you were talking about earlier that you have uh, visual demonstration. Yeah, that you so can show us. We, we have a video here showing showcasing how our note seek algorithm works in the lab. We can watch it right here. So this is a video of our limelight pipeline, and you'll see how when it goes to intake position, it'll steer directly into the note. And this is it going back to shoot. And what this allows us to do is basically just pick up that note every time, regardless of how the field is built and how even how the notes are set up. That's about it. Well, 5895 Petty Robotics already having three blue banners this year. We can't wait to see what you do here at the first championship. A huge uh, congratulations to what you've done, and we can't wait to see what y'all are uh, about to do here on Hopper. So. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.